everyone today's story is mumtaz embroiders her dreams author jolly rohit ki illustrator ram soni a level 4 story it was meety eid a time for celebration for everyone in lucknow the people in the bazaar were all wearing new clothes the shops were filled with sweets Imartis and laddus, syrupy jalebis, dil bahars and chum chums. Yummy! There were also delicious savouries, meat kebabs and sizzling potato tikkis. The chowk was well known for its shops selling all kinds of food, cloth and silver jewellery. Mehru Nisa and Kamru Nisa and their brother Azhar Mian were carrying bundles of gifts and leaf plates full of sweets and savouries. They were very proud of the new clothes with fine chicken embroidery that they were wearing. Presents they had received for Eid. Mehru's kurta had deep pink flowers and Kamru's had floral and paisley designs. Azhar Mian was particularly pleased with his new cap. which was very finely embroidered Abu their father was a contractor the wholesale merchants in the chowk gave him fabrics which he got embroidered by women in their homes in fine chicken work the women were paid by the merchant for every piece they worked on Abu too got a commission on each piece Since Abu made enough money, Ami, their mother, did not have to do embroidery like the other women. Kamru and Mehru went to the madrasa in the mosque, while Azhar went to the boys' school. Kamru and Mehru did do some embroidery, and everyone praised their work more than it deserved because their father was the contractor. who got work for all the women in the neighborhood suddenly azhar stopped nobody is giving a thought to our third sister who is at home and is not wearing anything new today he said mumtaz is not our sister she is our cousin and she is at home because she can't walk said mehru and kamru together But yes, we should take some sweets for her too. The children had reached the fair on the banks of the river Gomti by this time. There were many tempting things for sale: glittering glass bangles, ribbons, necklaces, clay birds, animals, soldiers, and dolls. There was something for everyone. Filled with excitement, the children forgot all about their cousin. Mumtaz sat alone in the house of Abida Khala, the children's aunt. Her crutches were in a corner nearby. She held a piece of embroidery in her hands, but her thoughts were far away in her doi, where her ammi and two sisters lived. Were they missing her as much as she missed them? After Mumtaz's father had died. There had never been very much money. One day, Abida Khala came and asked her mother to gather all the women of the mohalla to do their embroidery work together. From then on, the women sat together on charpais and mats in their courtyard each day, listening to songs on the radio as they worked away on the fabrics. Mumtaz's job was to provide tea for the younger women while the older khalas had their betel leaf boxes always at hand. Gossip was always hotter than the tea but work went on relentlessly till the evening when each woman folded her embroidery to go home and prepare dinner for the men who would return soon from work. The fabrics they embroidered were collected by Abida Khala who sent it to Kamru and Mehru's Abu. 
he sent back payments and more fabric a while ago mumtaz had been sent to lucknow with abida khala to learn new chicken stitches that she could teach the women in her doi though it was far from home mumtaz was not too unhappy she had her special parrot munia and two pigeons lakka and lotan who she had brought from her doi with her all the three birds were very talented lakka could fly to amazing heights Lotan was an astounding tumbler, dancer and acrobat, constantly active. Munia could actually mimic human speech. Mumtaz continuously coaxed Munia to imitate her. As Mumtaz worked, Lakka and Lotan were always up to their antics. They would eat the grain they were offered and fly off into the clouds. only to come back minutes later for more food mumtaz also made a new friend in lucknow this was munnu the local vegetable seller's 8 year old son he accompanied his father as he went around vending his wares and calling out in his special sing song way sabzi le lo recently he and mumtaz had become friends Every day she would share her snacks with him and they would sit and watch Lakka and Lotan play. On the day of Eid, as the two friends sat together watching the birds, Munu noticed that Mumtaz looked as though she was going to cry. "Why are you sad, Appa?" he asked. "Are you thinking of her doi? Do you have more birds there?" No, no more birds. Just my mother and my sisters, Rihana and Salma. Mumtaz said. She picked up her embroidery. Who taught you this embroidery? Munu asked. Chicken curry has been in our family for three generations. I learned from my mother, and she learned from her mother. Said Mumtaz. My nani was from Fateh Ganj in Lucknow. which was famous for two kinds of embroidery katao cutwork and chicken kari she told me stories of nawabs and begums of the baradari the 12 door palace and of ghazals and shairi she used to cook delicious biryani kebabs and sewaiya she always wore a white chicken chador i still have it Mumtaz's face brightened as she told Munnu about her grandmother. I have always seen my mother with embroidery in her hands, the needle going in and out of the fabric all day long. You mean she never went out of the house? Munnu asked. Only occasionally to buy the groceries or to visit relatives. Even Rehana and Salma don't go out very often and they wear a dupatta when they do. My mother wears a burqa. My sisters never went to school, but I studied till class 8. After that, I have been home learning how to do this from my mother and sisters, said Mumtaz. So you did go to school, said Munnu admiringly. He had never been to school at all as he had been helping his father since he was a little boy. Yes, I am one of the few girls among chicken workers who went to school. My mother cannot read and write. She could never calculate how much the merchant should pay her for her work. I helped her with the counting, but later Since we needed more money, I started embroidering too. Mumtaz paused and said softly, "I miss her so much. Sometimes I cry all night." Munnu wanted to cheer his friend up, so he changed the subject. "Do you have dreams at night?" "Oh, I dream. I'm flying away, just like Lotan and Lakka. I travel to many places." said mumtaz 
and maybe one day i'll be able to meet my nani go quickly and get your nani's chadar i'll show you a trick said munnu commandingly he told her about a man he had met on his rounds with his father chand pasha an old and ailing magician chand pasha had taught munnu an amazing trick and munnu wanted to use it to make mumtaz cheer up mumtaz fetched the chadar it had been her grandmother's last gift to her embroidered with her own hands the work was beautiful even the bakia on the edges the fine little running stitches were perfect close your eyes and hold on to one end of the chadar i'll take the other end now take a deep breath and think hard about what you want munnu said Mumtaz thought about flying high above the clouds to visit new lands, see new people. She felt she was running like the bakia, faster, faster, and even faster. Lotan picked up one end of the chadar in his beak, and Lakka the other. So she and Munnu rose above the ground and into the skies. They flew to a far away land. The mountains were blue, the skies were blue, and filled with many kinds of birds. Below them was a green valley of fruit-laden trees and flower-filled gardens. Lotan and Lakka landed near a turquoise-colored lake. By the lake, hunched over their work, were a group of men wearing warm ferns. They were embroidering woolen shawls using very fine needles. The designs they stitched were motifs from the landscape around them. Colorful flowers and leaves and birds. The eldest among them, Khushid, greeted Mumtaz and asked where she was from. Lucknow. said mumtaz i am a chicken car khushid showed her the shawl he was embroidering look he said i have put all the birds and flowers of kashmir into my shawl here is the gulistan which means eye of flowers and here are the bulbuls this is the chashme bulbul which means the eye of a bulbul Just as a bulbul can see all around it, so this stitch looks the same from all sides. He showed her how it was done. Mumtaz's nimble fingers worked on the shawl as she learned the new stitch. Khushid offered Mumtaz and Munu some hot Kashmiri tea and freshly baked bread. He told them how many years ago. Kashmiri artists had gone to the courts of the nawabs in Lucknow and worked with the chicken cars there. After a while, Lotan and Lakka returned and bidding goodbye to their new friends, Mumtaz and Munnu flew back to Lucknow. Before they knew it, they were back in Abida Khala's house. Munu had to rush off as his father was calling. Mumtaz bustled herself with her embroidery. Her head full of new designs she had seen. In a few days she created a marvelous kurta full of birds and creepers and flowers. At the center of each motif was the chashme bulbul. All the other women saw the piece and were amazed at the wonderful embroidery and imaginative designs. Instead of being happy that their cousin could create something so beautiful, Mehru and Kamru were jealous. How does Mumtaz know such designs? She does not go out anywhere, does not see anything, yet she makes these fine designs in such beautiful colors. said mehru there must be something we can do to stop her from getting all this praise said kamru 
The sisters thought hard. One evening, when Mumtaz had gone to fetch food for Lakka and Lotan, Meru hid all the coloured fabric that Mumtaz had been given to embroider, leaving only the white fabric. She also took away all Mumtaz's coloured thread. Ha! said Meru. Let's see if she can still win praise. The following day, Munu found Mumtaz sitting sadly next to her birds. She told him how she had only white fabric to embroider. White was considered the most difficult color to work on as it got dirty easily. And what designs will I do without colored thread? She asked sadly. Cheer up, said Munu. Get your nani's chadar and think deeply. See what magical land you might find today. This time, Mumtaz and Munu flew to a land without colour. It was an ancient land filled with people walking or riding in fine carriages. But there was one thing very strange about the land. Everyone wore only white, smooth, fine, radiant, white and there was very fine embroidery on their clothes. Under a neem tree by the wide road, Mumtaz saw her grandmother. With a cry of joy, Mumtaz ran to her. Nani hugged and kissed Mumtaz. Why are you sad, Mumtaz? She asked. Colored fabric was not meant for chicken work at all. Traditionally, the fabric for embroidery was always white malmal since it was meant mainly for men. Now since women also wear it, people embroider on different kinds of colored fabrics. But the best chicken work is done with white thread on a white malmal ground. That is the heart and soul of chicken, the greatest test of a needlewoman's skill. When Mumtaz came back, she took a large piece of fabric and began to embroider flowers using white thread. The leaves resembled the mangoes of her doi and the almonds of Kashmir. She created an elegant peacock in the midst of flowering bushes. The whole chadar was magical. Everyone was entranced by Mumtaz's creation. All the wholesalers and chicken cars talked of a fine work done by a young girl from her doi. Some rich ladies came to Abida Khala's house and asked for Mumtaz's embroidery to display in an exhibition they were organizing. All this made Kamru and Meru even more envious. They wondered how they could stop Mumtaz from getting so famous and upon a new plan. All the designs are usually printed on the fabric with washable ink. After the chicken cars embroider these, the fabric is washed to remove the pattern. Kamru and Meru refuse to get fabric printed for Mumtaz, but that did not stop her. Mumtaz's head was so full of all the beautiful things she had seen in her dreams that she did not need any other designs. One day, Mumtaz heard wonderful news. The wonderful chadar she had created on the white fabric had won an award. Mumtaz was invited to go to the town hall to receive her award. She asked Kamru and Mehru to come with her. They were ashamed of their ill will when they saw how happy she was. At the award ceremony, Kamru and Meru saw with what respect people treated Mumtaz. Some people even congratulated them for having such a talented cousin. After they came home, Kamru asked Mumtaz, Where did you get all these wonderful designs? Mumtaz was quiet for a while. Then she thought, I should share my good fortune. 
so she smiled and invited kamru to hold on to her nani's chadar and think deeply kamru did so looking a bit puzzled all she could see were munya lakka lotan up to their usual antics about the illustrations the ancient art of paper cutting is practiced in the cities of mathura and vrindavan in uttar pradesh traditionally fine tree bark was used though now many varieties of paper are used as well the elaborate designs are usually of religious scenes flora and fauna textile motifs and geometric patterns this intricate paper craft is used to decorate idols in temples create stencil pictures of gods on cloth or stencils for children colored sheets or metallic paper is placed under the stencil to give colors or shine to the picture dastkari hat samiti is a large organization of indian crafts people working to improve the social and economic status of people engaged in traditional handicraft skills local forms of paintings and craft work have been used to illustrate this series of four stories to encourage the sharing of varied cultural expressions this work was made possible with the support of unesco new delhi i hope this story is of great information to you and a knowledge of about how the chicken curry was evolved and emerged as in from a white colored chicken curry to varied colors chicken curry craft thank you so much